Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. So as we begin to look at this week's news, we can see that the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500 all fell significantly this week. And now we have gone from being up for the year uh, to being down for the year, uh, the Dow Jones being down the most. So at one point in time, we were up 8 9% for the year, and now you can see that the market is now down for the year. That certainly is significant. So again, we had an aggressive sell-off this week, 7%. This was the worst weekly performance in more than two years. I mean, this really reminded me of the 2008-2009 fall where it was just, you know, you barely any bounces to buy. It was just very, very, very aggressive. Uh, no one finding areas of support. Now, some of the real aggressive selling happened on Thursday, and that was with renewed concerns, uh, debt concerns in Europe, specifically with Spain and Italy. And then as, even though we had positive, if you want to call it positive, jobs numbers on Friday, uh, we gapped up and fell down uh, uh, pretty hard. So that aggressive selling was continuing. And then the ECB, the European Central Bank, announced that it's going to provide liquidity for the Italian and Spanish bonds. And the market rallied off of that. And it fell back. It was, Friday was really volatile. I mean, if you're a, a futures day trader, you could have made a lot of money had you cut those swings properly. And of course, the most important thing that happened this week was the U.S. debt deal. And that was very volatile also, um, somewhat like Friday, where uh, you know, the deal happened over the weekend, and so the market opened up plus 20 um, and then just sell, uh, sold off. So it almost was a classic sell the news type situation. Uh, and as we mentioned, the non-farm payroll came in better than expected. It wasn't great. It's not the 400000 that we need, but it was better than expected. And just like Monday, we were uh, the market opened up higher for the day, but again, that aggressive selling just pushed that down. Um, and there were still some, even though the debt deal was made, the rating agencies um, still haven't all come in. Most are Moody's and everybody have said they're okay, but S&P has still not said whether or not it's going to downgrade the, uh, its rating on the debt for the states. As we look into next week, we can see there's not really any major earnings company. There's a lot of retail sales going on, so you'll see a lot of retail company, but probably the driver of this week is going to be the rate decision. So are we going to see QE3? Um, you know, uh, and on Friday we got consumer sentiment, but I would say what happens on Tuesday certainly could have a big impact. Uh, if they say anything positive, with as hard as we have sold off, anything that the market likes could bring a nice rally, at least back to the beginning of the week. We should see. You never know. Let's go to the charts and take a look. Okay, so we're starting off with the monthly view of the S&P 500. Normally, we go smaller time frame and zoom back out, but because I want to uh, really make sure we hone in on some support and resistance price levels, I'm starting larger and coming down in. So the first thing that's jumping out at me is this, uh, you know, basically 1,200 price level. You can see in April of of 10, 2010, it was a swing high, and then we pulled back. And then there's also in that same price level back in July of 08, there was some price action in there. So I'm going to mark that off. And then now let's uh, 
go back and zoom into our smaller time frame and, and then work our way out. So we can see that price level that we marked off, again, we found uh, a 2010 and a 2008 price uh, price action, and that's basically right where we closed. Now, one thing to notice is as we look at uh, where we bounce, now a lot of it was uh, attributed to um, the ECB came out with their announcement around noon, 12.30ish, uh, and then the market rallied back, um, back up and down around uh, break even for today but if we go to our weekly we can see the other thing that's there is the 200 moving average so we kind of bounced off that on a weekly time frame so uh, we, we sold off hard uh, you can see that for when we look at the week's action and you can see this move down we made once we made this put the swing high in and we drew our downtrend line and we came back up to it we have sold off hard I mean, you can see this is 13.45, and so we've dropped um, almost 200 point at one time, uh, just on the S&P 500 in this two-week, two and a half-week time frame. So obviously, our daily time frame indicators all are in oversold price levels. MACD a little bit behind, and so what we have to do is go ahead and see if we have any dual time frame agreements. So we'll go to our weekly. And our weeklies are, are not yet quite oversold. They're heading down towards it. We can see that, but they're not there. And again, we found that uh, an initial support at the 200 moving average and what we marked off as a last swing high and a swing low from our previous time frames. So um, there may be a little bit more room to go down, but what we'll see, and this is what's real interesting, is as we go out to the monthly, that we are nowhere near oversold on the monthly. So the monthly says there's more room to go. And so what I really would watch is we've got 1,100 as a 200 simple moving average on the monthly, and then we just talked about the weekly, and the 200 moving average is at about 1,150 on uh, the, the weekly. So those are the two price levels I would watch if we continue to push down. Um, now again, we do have a catalyst this week with the FMC rates that could um, sync with our oversold daily and allow for us to get a bounce. But even if we get a bounce, remember our longer time frames are so, showing more movement down. And so what you would like is that when our shorter time frame gets an agreement, that's, that's the trade. Now let's switch over to the NASDAQ. And we'll do the same thing. Let's zoom out for a second. Go out to our monthly and grab our price level tool. And let's see. So here's where we are. So you can kind of see the 50 moving average on the daily is probably going to be our next support price level. But we can see this price action here from May of uh, 2008 and then also April uh, 2010 seems to be our price level so we'll mark that now we'll zoom back down to our daily but there's one thing to notice um, on our S&P 500 we were talking about on the monthly the 200 moving average but we said support on a NASDAQ might come from the 50 moving average, exponential moving average. So here's our support. Uh, all of our indicators basically are oversold, just like the S&P 500. Uh, one thing to note, and I didn't do this on the, uh, the S&P 500, but you guys can do it on your own, is two things. First, we've got this right here. We've got that downturn line, and then we've got the more aggressive downtrend line this way. So if we break those downtrends, so 2600 here, um, that certainly could indicate a move higher. We'll go out to our weekly, and we can see the 200 moving average all the way down to 2250. And if we go to our monthly, we can see uh, we've got the uh, 23 50-ish with the 50 moving average. So we do have some support coming up by moving averages on the NASDAQ. 
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of our uh, market leaders, starting off with Apple. And we can see Apple's obviously in the downtrend here. Uh, we can take a quick second, draw our trend line to watch for those of you who want to catch the next breakout. There you go. Uh, but Apple certainly, uh, we could say, is heading down. Moving on to Amazon. Amazon definitely pulling back some probably some support here in the 190 185 price level uh, and the 200 moving average but uh, Amazon heading down Google Oops uh, let's get rid of you Google pulling back possibly filling the gap that's what I would watch for is for filling the gap here um, and then that's this purple line here is the 500 moving average found support at the 50 but uh, pulling down and this is another one that for those of you if the market does turn around certainly want to watch the downtrend here uh, let's go on to the next one Goldman Sachs Goldman Sachs was in this range for several months falling out of that even broke this little swing here so buyers are definitely trying to hold this up but it has broken out of the range uh, Netflix our high flyer even Netflix has uh, pulled back and broken the 50 million hours but I tell you what this 200 may be a blind faith place to look at making a, a, a purchase there. There's also some key support in this 225 price level. And finally, Priceline. Uh, Priceline, more sideways. This is the best one. It's sideways versus pulling back. But we can see we had five that are um, pulling back, and we have one that is sideways. So that's right now showing us that our market leaders are, are definitely showing some weakness. Okay, as we start off by looking at the dollar, um, remember this week we have the FOMC minutes. So the dollar and gold are probably going to be the most impacted by that rate decision. And you can see we're consolidating. We had a tighter range, a larger range, but the dollar seems to be consolidating. Um, gained a little strength as the market pulled back, but Friday there was a little weakness. Um, gold, gold put in an inside bar on Friday here, put in an inside bar. Um, off of this great move and now as we're, we're breathing the market's breathing a little bit point of control at 1667 I'm sorry point of control is actually 1630 this is just our value area high is 1667 so it'd be interesting it'd be an aggressive short below 1640 down to the 20 moving average and then oil is still basically um, pulling back and it pulled back to the 500 moving average here so what we need to see is will this act as support um, or will and allow it to come back up to its range but you can see this sell-off that oil has gone through also now keep in mind uh, when everything is doing one thing and the market becomes overly bearish you know what they say when everybody's doing one thing do the opposite so this is the perfect time Maybe the FOMC rate minute would be the catalyst, but when everything's doing one thing and it's just oversold, that's when you need to start thinking about finding a way to go opposite of the crowd. So as we move to our education uh, portion of our video, we're going to be using the book Intelligent Investor. And so uh, by Benjamin Graham, so that course leads to what is an intelligent investor. And he says that there's proof that high Q or a higher education is not enough to make yourself an intelligent investor. Instead, you need to be able to be focused and disciplined so that you can effectively enact or execute your trading system. It's not about how smart you are. It's not about uh, the education that you have. It's about being able to follow a, a plan systematically uh, and have full control of your emotions. You know you can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? Our resources that we have available for you, we have a free five video course for you where you can learn about how to develop your own high probability trading setups. Uh, our coaching will help you one on one develop a personalized trading plan, will help you have that psychological capital that control your emotions that you need to take your trading to the next level. We also have a turnkey trading system if you want to um, uh, watch 
how to implement a trading system, the introduction of trading, trading plan components, and all the trading setups. It includes a free coaching session. It's not $5,000 like most systems. We want to give you it for an affordable price because, again, we do believe coaching is a difference. We've got a great futures broker for you with uh, interest margins as low as $300. And, of course, we have a trader package with both on PCs and Mac so you can scan and find your best trades. And as we said, it's not about the system or indicator. We can sell that to you. But the true difference that's going to change your trading career is building that psychological control, that trader's mindset that allows you to follow your system systematically. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time.